If you follow this channel closely, you'll know it's full of subliminal programming from our reptile overlords, known as the federal government, and that my favorite everyday carry light is the Zebra Light SC600W Mark III HI. And if you follow even closer, you'll know that today's orders are to dig five 12 foot holes in your backyard, and that I thought the Zebra Light user interface needed some tweaking. Well, Zebra Light has been tweaking hard, not because, of course, they listen to me, but they made their UI about perfect with their new AA powered headlamps and everyday carry size flashlights, which are some of the brightest ever on a standard AA battery. So let's look at one of their newest, the SC5C Mark II, which is an update to their SC5 line of flashlights, which removes 14500 support, offers high CRI neutral versions, and has a more programmable UI. So you can fine tune it how you like it. The SC5, C Mark II, is an aluminum constructed, AA powered compact flashlight that uses a Cree XP L2 emitter that has a natural anodized finish and a glass lens. And there's some nice grippy knurling on the outside. And as always, Zebra Light's knurling is well textured and among the best on any flashlight. It gives it a good grip. It has a decent pocket clip that's fairly strong, although not a super deep carry like the SC600. Not sure why they changed it up. I like that one a little bit better. It comes in a brown shipping slash product box, and you get sparrow rings, the light, and an instruction manual. Now, since this is a AA powered compact flashlight, expect reasonable, useful amounts of light. The under 500 lumens of this light is perfectly fine because 90% of my flashlight use can be accomplished with 100 lumens or less. The SC5 has six constant light modes, four strobes, available at any time for idiots, but there's actually 12 levels of constant brightness you can choose to program to wherever you want. Here are the 12 levels, starting from the lowest. My figures in zebra lights are on the screen. First are the low modes. Zebra light knows their low modes, which is why I like zebra light the most. 0.08 lumens. I'll call them by their lumen figures because that's what zebra light does. 0.28 lumens. One lumen. 2.8 lumens. These modes, especially the two lowest sublumen modes, are useful for darkness adjusted vision, sometimes called night vision, but not to be confused with night vision. Confused yet? Now the medium lumen modes, let's call those reading modes, these are too bright if you want to preserve night vision, are listed here. 7.4 lumens. 18 lumens. 40 lumens. And 79 lumens. Now let's get high modes. 144 lumens. 236 lumens. 352 lumens. And 475 lumens that steps down after three minutes. Generally on my SC600, which you can put out over 1200 lumens, I use the 150-ish lumen mode as my high, and that works fine for me. 475 lumens is capable of lighting up stuff over 100 feet away, in real world terms. Not super bright, but bright enough. Now you're like, 475 lumens, that ain't bright. Well, sorry, that's bright as shit for a 1AA battery. I did some brief checking and compared AA powered lights, the MT10A from Nikkor, 170 lumens on a AA. Three Night Archer, 211 lumens on a AA. That's the A1. Army Tech Prime, about 320 lumens on a AA. At least my older version. Basically put, this is probably the brightest flashlight you can get off of a single AA battery, period, without 14500 support, of course. I'm going to say probably in case there's one or two I'm missing, which is fine. Again, some of those lights support 14500, and when manufacturers advertise maximum brightnesses, they usually don't list the AA listings. So look at their manuals. Okay, the user interface, or the part where people fall asleep. I don't care if you fall asleep as long as the video plays all the way through. So I get my stats. If you have owned a zebra light, that's only a few years old or less and love the user interface. The good news is ZebraLite managed to keep it intact, but they also added more programming. And so YouTube videos are probably going to be longer, like this one. This is now my favorite user interface, so much now that this is my new everyday carry light. Because, again, top brightness isn't as important to me as it is some people. Okay, let me start with the idiot explanation of the user interface. ZebraLite's user interface is shortcut-based. Four groups, low, mid, high, and strobe. Each of those four groups has a toggleable secondary brightness level. Now how to get to these modes. To get to low, press and hold for half a second from off. 
See, it's on. Click, turn it off. Cool. To get to mid, double click from off. These are your mid brightness levels. Turn it off by clicking. To get high, uh, quick press from off. Cool. To get to strobe, use three clicks from off. So you're like, well, how do I get to the secondary levels in each of those mode groups? Good question. Double click once you get in the mode for more than a second. So let's say medium. Medium is a double click, remember, so it's off. Double click it. All right, wait a second, and then you can double click it again. Double clicking will get you back and forth between those two assignable modes. The last one you use will be saved in a mode memory when you turn it off. So for example, low, press and hold for a second, release. Timing is a little tricky on low because too short, you're on high, too long, you're on medium. But you're in low, double click to change between low and secondary low. That works on high too, awesome. Also, when from any mode, you can scroll through load, mid, and high main levels by just pressing and holding from off or on. So to strobe, triple click from off, double click to scroll through them, click once to turn it off and save that last strobe into memory. Okay, so let's get into programming. Grab a beer. This is going to take a while. But first, no, there's three save user interface groups. G5 is a standard one by default. Then G6 and G7, you can program any mode to any of the shortcuts cool. To get into any of those, do the number that is labeled from off. So I want to program G6 and it's off. I click six times rapidly. Now I'm in G6 group. So you can save like up to two presets and then your standard preset for your as it ships from the factory. So G6 and G7, you can program the main and secondary levels to any of its 12 available modes. So that's a total of six, not counting strobes. The way you program the levels in G5, G6, and G7 are all exactly the same. You just have to turn on the mode you want to program. Let's say I want to program H1 and H2. Remember in G5 you can only program H2. Remember that, just like old zebra lights. I turn on high, then double click six times. Then it gives me the levels. To go forward in the 12 available levels, double click again. To go downward, triple click. Once you find the mode you want to assign to that one, just turn it off and it's saved. To go to the secondary level, you have to turn it on, you know, wait a second, and then double click, and then assign it the same way. That's basically it. You can do that with the main level and the sub level. Main levels are denoted by one, sub levels are denoted by two, so H1 would be high main, H2 would be the sub level high. Now, there's not a double clicking of the strobes, it's just you have to scroll through them. So you can save the last one you used. The light has an electronic switch, so unscrew the tail cap slightly when not in use long term or transporting in your nutsack. Run times. Run times are accomplished using a standard and a loop battery. I got slightly less run times on some of the run times than Zebra Light. I suspect maybe that's because they were using an Antelope Pro and I used a standard Antelope. So Antelope Pros will give you longer run times. Regular Antelopes are 1900 milliamp hours. Pros are 2500 milliamp hours. That's why. If you want longer run times, buy the Pros. Don't use alkalines in your zebra lights. They leak. They call you names when your back is turned. Drink all your beer, especially your last one, and should only be used as a backup. First is 475 lumen mode. Strap in, fools. Turbo starts out strong, out the gate, holds steady, and at three minutes in, drops to about 31% overall. I measured about 110 Fahrenheit at the head. Not bad. Not wearing glove territory. I measured 487 lumens per ANSI standards, and it drops to 332 lumens on my DIY device and if you do the math with this lux meter in the frame here. It almost matches exactly. That tells me that this method ain't too bad for determining brightness. So it holds that 300 and a third lumens till about 30 minutes in where we get some big drops like 88.5% overall. That's to about 50 lumens and at 37 minutes in it drops way down to its lowest moonlight mode like it did in all my runtime tests. It never was totally off every time I finished one. It's a fraction of a lumen emergency light. It's a short runtime, but what did you expect on a single AA battery? Zebra Light's runtime claim is right on the money on this one. They say 30 minutes, and I got a little over. So, next is what Zebra Light refers to as 352 lumen mode. I got 332, remember? Over the first 30 minutes, there's only a 3.5%-ish drop. 37 minutes in, there's a sharp drop that's 81% overall from the start. 42 minutes in, you get a fraction of a lumen coming out, emergency light only. This is still more than just about any AA-powered flashlight, even on this mode. Zebra Light says 0.9 hours. I say 
0.61 hours if we're going to convert that into math. Now 236 lumen mode. It started out like any other mode and runs nice and solid for 45 minutes in. You're at only a 1.5% drop overall, even with my Lux meter sensor slowly creeping. Hopefully you ain't mad about it, because I ain't. 59 minutes in, you get a hard bump, a 73% drop overall, 106 minutes in, it's emergency light. Zebra light says 1 hour 30 minutes. It's not quite that. Put in a new battery. Now 144 lumen mode, just to test your patience. Starts out steady and holds that level of brightness almost constant for two hours. Then in two hours and 12 minutes, it's done. Zebra light says 2.8 hours. My figure would be 2.2 hours. Again, they probably used an Analu Pro, or they're just wrong. You're like, how about 79 lumen mode, or M1? Glad you asked, no one. One hour goes by. Remember, you're not getting this time back. Two hours and three hours and whatever. You get a total of five hours, 34 minutes of constant light. Zebra light says 4.9 hours. On its spec, you wouldn't know because you're no longer here. I got more though, right? Now 40 lumen mode. This is the last one I'm going to do. Zebra Light says this one gives you 9.6 hours, but in reality you get 10 hours, 22 minutes of constant light, and a badge of honor for watching a flashlight dim. Um, beam shots, okay, we're going to do it in the basement this time. Small light, small brightness. Here are the lights I'll be comparing it to. Distance is about 30 feet from the flashlight to the DVD shelf. The lights are in no particular order there, but there's a size comparison, so you can see how big they are compared to each other versus a Zebra Light SC5 C Mark II. I've seen some people complain about the tint. Mine came as a nice, slightly yellowish, orangey tint. I like it. Zebra Light claims about 4,000 Kelvin. I like the tint, and the hotspot is larger and less intense than my other Zebra Light, the SC600, which is mainly that in the user interface why I'm switching this out for that one. The light is a little better suited when you need to illuminate stuff far away. My estimated lumens figures are on the screen and the lights are set to their maximum output per flashlight science. This zebra light is much brighter overall. You can see when going back to the SC5, which is able to squeeze quite a bit of brightness out of a AA battery, more than any other of my AA powered lights, especially the Phoenix LD15. It's a two mode light and only puts out a little over 100 lumens. This has a large, cool hotspot. That doesn't make sense. Cool, hot? How does that work? Okay, back to the SC5. Much nicer tint, although I do like that Phoenix has a big hotspot. Know what I'm saying? Now that the Army Tech Prime Pro is on, this is a double A. I like the tint, and this one can be run off of a 14500 for higher brightness. It's not a whole lot brighter, but brighter. It's also a larger light than the Zebra Light, so it's bulkier in your pocket. I also like the looks of the Zebra Light more too because there's less writing on it. Come on, Army Tech. Basically, I'm trying to keep these comparisons to AA or AAA lights only except for the Zebra Light. What about the two AA powered Olight Baton S2A? This is a pretty bright AA powered light. That's because it uses two AA batteries and supplies a greater voltage. It's a nice light, but a tad long in the pocket. Let's go back to the SC5 to keep it fresh in your mind. I promise we're getting close to the end. Now the lumen top, IYP365. Great tint with the Nietzsche emitter. Thinner and brighter, longer. Some people might prefer it in the pocket even though it has lower high brightnesses and kind of a weird UI. We'll go back to the Zebra Light for a second before moving on to the Through Night Archer A1. I reviewed all these lights seen in this video, so watch them all if you're not doing things or talking to people or don't have any friends. Okay, beam shot's over. Let's go over the dimensions as we wrap it up. So we can see that it's light and small and tiny and whatever. Zebra lights are my favorite because they are compact and durable. Here's the other zebra light next to it with the weights above them so you can see the difference in weight. Well, okay, so technically I had to send my first zebra light SC5 C Mark II back because I saw visible PWM on one mode and the lowest mode flickered. My new one exhibited no such issues, so check yours out closely. The pocket clip is, you know, it's okay, it's not bad, it's really tight though, so uh, it holds pretty firm on your pocket. It may chew up some finer fabrics. I'm not sure why they didn't go with this SC600 deep carry clip, because that's a great one. Um, 
whatever. The UI is everything I hoped for. I now have programmed the high modes out of the single press and long presses and made them require more buttons to get there. That was my problem. I hated that I could accidentally activate high if my press was too quick or too long on my first turn on. So now I have high mode set to double click because it makes more sense to me that way. I like working up in brightness, not the other way around. I don't care about the lack of lithium ion support. The AA is plenty bright for me. I can wait until they put the new UI in an 18650 version, hopefully, crossing fingers. But until then, I'm glad ZebraLite addressed the complaints from a few of us about their user interface. Complaining on the internet does work, everyone. You heard it here first. By the way, it saves all your changes into memory, so when you switch out batteries, it ain't no thing. You can also reset factory settings. I'm not gonna go into that. Also, ZebraLite recesses its switch buttons, so they're hard to activate in your pocket. Some manufacturers make the light switch a little harder to press on electronic switches and don't recess them, like Polite. But I prefer the ZebraLite way, a recessed button that's easy to press. And one more time, this is the best AA light I've ever reviewed, just in case that was ambiguous and gets a very strong recommendation for me. I bought this light with my own money. And one thing to note, after I shot most of the review and recorded it, I found out that the light heats up if you put the battery in backward. It did not damage the light, but I wouldn't call it proper reverse polarity protection. So be careful, it may damage your light. It didn't mine. If you like this review, subscribe, like, comment. Thanks for watching.